grace, mercy, and peace, these are the gifts that are yours from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in a gospel text like today's, there is so much to preach on. There are so many sermons within this sermon that we could talk about today. We could talk about the Trinitarian doctrine that Jesus is in the Father and the Father is in Jesus. And we could talk about the persons of the Trinity being united in the one Godhead. We could talk about that. We could also talk about the exclusive, exclusivity, that's a hard word to say, exclusivity of the gospel. That Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The only way, the only truth, the only way to eternal life. Yes, the exclusivity of the gospel is very much up front in this text today. You have the promise of an eternal home in God's heavenly house. A room with your name on it that Jesus says he has gone to prepare. In my Father's house there are many rooms. I am going to prepare a place for you. Yes, one and a half weeks until Ascension Day. This makes sense to us. This reading is assigned for this fifth Sunday of Easter because we are preparing our ears and our hearts to rejoice in and celebrate Christ's ascension into heaven. Christ's going away, if you will, into the clouds to sit at his Father's right hand in order to rule and reign for all eternity. Yes, in this Ascension Day, as we pre prepare ourselves for Ascension Day, we are preparing ourselves for Christ's second coming, that when he comes again, he will take us home to himself. But this reading is not necessarily an Ascension Day reading. The purpose is not necessarily, at least Jesus' purpose, is not to prepare us for Ascension Day, but rather Jesus says these words not five weeks after Easter. Jesus says these words during Holy Week. Jesus says these words in anticipation of the events of Good Friday. When he said these words, he was referring to his crucifixion on the cross. And so when Jesus says, I am going to prepare a place for you, we are often like Thomas, aren't we? Where we say, Jesus, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Follow me, and you will know where I am going. And where is Jesus going? But to the cross. Yes, he's, Jesus is not some kind of divine construction worker or a host of an HGTV show where he is really good at building places and decorating rooms and setting them up just for a particular person even though he says he's going to prepare a place for us in his Father's house, which has many rooms, Jesus is not building these rooms. The space is already prepared. The rooms are already there. The only thing that is lacking for us is a rightful claim to those rooms. The thing that is lacking is a way for us to get in. You see, heaven is perfect. And we are not. Heaven is a place for the righteous. And we are unrighteous. And so Jesus says, I am going to prepare a place for you. To prepare a way for you to get in. For you, the unrighteous. For you, the sinner. I am going to prepare a place. And Jesus goes to the cross in order to prepare that place for you. 
Yes, Jesus' cross is the way to free us from our sins. This is the way. The cross is the only way. I remember when I was just out of college, I got my first Garmin. Do you remember the Garmin? Anybody still have a Garmin? When I got my first Garmin, I was so excited because I would never have to stop at another gas station again to ask directions when I was lost. Until you realize that the Garmin quickly goes out of date or is quickly not utilized correctly because of construction or new road construction or anything like that. There are new roads, there are new paths, and the Garmin does not always have the correct way. Well, now we have the ability on our cell phones to get directions anywhere we are going. Perhaps some of our guests from out of town used their GPS to find Jonesville today. But as you use that, there are also alternate routes that can come up on your directions. Maybe this way is the quickest way, but this way will have a little less traffic, or this way might be more scenic. Sometimes we appreciate a scenic route as opposed to a direct route. We appreciate the ability to drive the county roads instead of the very busy interstate. But in Jesus, there are no alternate routes to heaven. As much as we might like to say, all paths lead to the same destination, Jesus says otherwise. There is one way, his way, the way of the cross. Jesus says the Son of Man must suffer many things. The Son of Man must be crucified and die. And perhaps we, like Peter, say, may it never be, Lord. And we want to avoid the way of suffering. We want to avoid the way of the cross. And yet, Jesus says there is no scenic route or more pleasurable route to heaven. You go the way of the cross or you don't go at all. Only Jesus, only his way, only his truth offers us his life, the life that he gives. And yes, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, his way is the way of the cross. Dying with Jesus, putting to death our sinful flesh, drowning the old Adam in holy baptism. This morning, we got to see Thomas go the way of the cross. Thomas, with a death of his sinful nature, and a rising of his new man in Christ in the waters of holy baptism. This morning, Thomas went the way of Jesus. And now Jesus, now Thomas knows Jesus. And more importantly, Jesus knows Thomas. Yes, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, truth is not relative. Truth is fixed. It is sure and certain, as we said last week, it is truly true. This then, following Jesus' way, following his truly true truth, leads us to his life, which is the life, the only life that matters, true life, eternal and abundant life. And Jesus has prepared the way to that life. In our reading from Acts today, we see St. Stephen go the way of suffering and death for the sake of his Savior, Jesus Christ, knowing full well that by his cross, heaven is opened to us. Thomas, then, this is the life of the baptized. Get going where Jesus goes, suffering with him, yes, indeed, even dying with him, in order that we may also rise with him and live with him for eternity.
Yes, that we may live eternally with Jesus is the reason he goes where he is going. That where Jesus is, even on the cross, there we may also be. On the cross, in his glory, Jesus makes this promise. He is going in order to prepare a place for you. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, amen.